Hey everyone, it's Rupert here. Usually I'm on the recruiting team, but at the moment I'm doing an intern to learn and helping out with some UX research coordination. And today I'm going to walk you through how to source UX research participants using LinkedIn Recruiter. So before you get started, what you need to do is make sure you've got a LinkedIn Recruiter license and the instructions on how to do this are here in the handbook. So once you're in LinkedIn Recruiter, what you need to do is navigate to the projects tab and create a project and name it based on the research study that you're looking to source participants for. Once you're in the project, what you then need to do is navigate to the talent pool. This is where you'll see all the different search filters that you're able to use. The ones that I tend to use um, mostly are, are things like job titles, keywords, and, and maybe even years of experience. So on job titles, you'll see the example here of searching for testers or SDEs. And this is because we're searching for that persona for the fuzzing research study. I've searched some job titles within inverted commas. Um, this means that I'll only search for that in full term and stop software engineers being pulled through in this example. I've also um, made the search even more specific by toggling for current job titles, but you can search for current or past job titles as well. When it comes to keywords, LinkedIn supports Boolean search and there's a few examples of how to use that and how to utilize Boolean in your searches in the blog post that's linked here. Um, this example uses an or operator but and or not and a few others are also examples of uh, Boolean operators. I've used fuzzing or fuzzer um, and it's worth bearing in mind the I guess the different uh, nomenclature that can be used by other organizations um, when you're searching within LinkedIn Recruiter to make sure that you're bringing the widest pool of participants possible. Then, once your initial search results have been outputted, uh, you'll be able to review them. And the way that I find to be most efficient for doing this is opening up the first few in a new tab just to make sure that because they're accurate and relevant. LinkedIn will sort by relevance and I guess post the most relevant profiles or what it perceives to be the most relevant profiles in this first 25 results. And then once you've, I guess, reviewed those initial profiles, you can bulk message those profiles um, using LinkedIn's bulk message feature. So to do that, um, you can check the checkbox that's highlighted here. Um, uncheck any profiles that you would like to avoid messaging by unchecking the profile next to their name and then click on the uh, message icon. So that'll take you to this page. And then here you can see the, I guess the different template that I've been using when it comes to reaching out to potential participants. To find this template, you click on the template icon. So it's template hyphen UX and it'll bring up this template. What I find to work, I guess most effectively, is ensuring that the subject has got the type of domain that we're looking to do a research study into. Um, listed within the subject. Um, and then, um, as you'll see on the bottom, what I have done um, is I've left it kind of open whether you send out the research study um, in this initial outreach or not. I think it comes across as a little bit more personalized and offers, offers the potential participant an opportunity to self-select out if you don't include the study to to start with and instead engage with them before sending them the research study. But it's open to you, obviously it'll be a little bit more time consuming, consuming this way as you'll have to respond with the portraits link or your candy link depending on the type of study that you're doing. And then you can save the template that you've customized using the Save as template that's highlighted here. Then from there, if you're interested in how the, I guess, outreach is performing, what you can navigate to is the reports tab, email analytics, and this will give you an overview around how we give the different templates you're using is performing when it comes to reaching out to these potential participants. So it's worth bearing in mind that you'll probably see somewhere between 20 and 50% response rates overall. That will depend on things like the skill set and the type of experience that you're looking to recruit participants with. And then most of your responses will come within the first 24 to 48 hours. So if your responses are still low at that point, um, it's either worth sending up some more, tweaking your messaging or tweaking your search. Yeah, that's everything. So I hope this is useful. I hope it's given you some good insight into using LinkedIn Recruiter. I'm here alongside with the wider recruiting team as well. If you, if you do have any questions at all, it's, most of us live in this pretty much every day. And yeah, happy sourcing.